One of the biggest problems that people have with handhelds is that they are handhelds. They have to be small and portable, which means if you're gonna make something small and portable, the screens on them also have to be small and portable. But what if you could have your cake and eat it too? What if you could have a small portable handheld with a giant 120 inch screen. That's what Vitcher is saying they've accomplished and after testing out their Vitcher One XR glasses, I think I believe them. So let's talk about my new favorite Steam Deck companion, but before we get started, quick disclosure. Vitcher did send over the glasses for review, but everything in the video are my own thoughts and opinions. Vitcher has no say over what I'm going to say and the only changes that I will make to this video will be if I get something factually wrong, then I'll post an update. All right, with that out of the way, let's jump right in and test out the Vitcher your one XR glasses with the Steam Deck and let's see if they're any good and spoiler alert they're really really good but we need to back up what actually are these glasses well at a very basic level they're basically just an external display if you plug the glasses into your Steam Deck or laptop or tablet or phone or anything like that they're going to recognize it as an external display and then they'll treat it as such the cool part is the display is actually pretty damn good Vitcher says it's a 120 inch display at 10 feet away. Nobody knows what that means. I don't know what that means. But what I did to give you some reference is I have a 32 inch monitor and I adjusted the glasses so that the display of the glasses was right on top of the display of the monitor in the real world because you can look through the glasses. And with that comparison, I would say these glasses look like anywhere between a 24 to a 27 inch display at your regular, basically arms reach away. If you're a VR nerd, they have a 55 PPD or pixels per degree, which is incredibly sharp. For some reference, the MetaQuest 3 has about a 25 PPD, so it's really good. I'm not saying these two things compete against each other. They're totally different things. I'm just saying that the display is sharp. And because it's so sharp, unlike on most VR headsets where you get the screen door effect, especially when you're looking at text where you can see the lines in between the pixels, on this, you don't get that effect almost at all. The screens look super sharp and text is easy to read. I do have one caveat there, but we'll get to it later. We gotta talk about ergonomics because it doesn't matter how good the displays are. If it's super uncomfortable to wear, you're not gonna wear it. So how do they hold up? The ergonomics are just fine. They have adjustable nose pieces so you can get it to sit just right on your nose. And I found that actually helped a lot switching to one that fit me better. I usually wear contacts, but at night I wear prescription glasses and I weighed my prescription glasses versus the One XRs and the One XRs weigh about three times what my regular glasses weigh. So that just gives you some reference. They're not crazy heavy, but they are definitely heavier and there's no way to hide that weight. You're going to feel weight on the bridge of your nose, especially for me and a tiny bit behind your ears, although that didn't really bother me too much. I start to get nose fatigue at about one hour, maybe two hours, and then I wanna take them off. But usually what I do is if you have any breaks in your gameplay, I'll just pull the glasses up and rest them on my forehead for maybe just 30 seconds or a minute while something loads and then put them back down. And that's enough that I can pretty much wear the glasses indefinitely. But I think the even more comfortable way to wear them is if you just lay down. Then most of the pressure is taken away from the bridge of your nose and it moves to, I guess it's on your head, but just the way that the ergonomics work when you're laying down, it feels super comfortable and I could wear them laying down forever. They don't bother me at all. And I'm just gonna skip ahead and show you my favorite use case with these glasses, which is laying down. I didn't think this was gonna matter. I've laid down and watched TV and played video games my whole life. I mean, that's just normal. I've also laid down with the Steam Deck in bed and you kind of lay on your side and you can have it resting and you can have it looking at the screen. And I thought that was okay too until I tried out these glasses. And what you can do is you can just lay down on your back, have the Steam Deck resting in your lap, be staring straight up at the ceiling or wherever is most comfortable for you. Because remember, the display is always going to be in the middle of your vision. So you can put your head wherever you want. And I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, the ergonomics of this is so much better than any other way to use the Steam Deck. It is mind-blowingly comfortable to use these laying down on a bed or a couch. It has changed the way that I play video games, and that sounds so silly, but it's just so much more comfortable. I don't wanna go back to having to sit up like this like an idiot to play my games. <laughs> the only problem that I've had with laying down is sometimes if you have a super soft pillow and you lay down, the pillow will bump the cable and it can bump it off and then disconnect. The nice thing is the cable is magnetic and you can put it right back on and it's super easy. You can do it without taking the headset off with very little practice because the magnets are really strong. All right, but now we got to talk about the screens themselves. And you would think it's just your standard 1080p 60 hertz display. And that is true. But these things get crazy bright. They peak out at 
1800 nits, which is absolutely insane, especially considering it's right in front of your face. I basically never use them on peak brightness because it's just brighter than I need. But to be fair, I almost always use these lens covers. And while you don't have to use the lens covers, if you don't use them, you're going to be seeing the outside world kind of behind your display. And so if there's bright lights coming in from the outside world, then it'll kind of wash out your display. So I just think it looks a lot better. The colors look better with the lens covers on. And speaking of colors, it has a 129% sRGB coverage. So it is incredibly color accurate. And on a not technical note, the displays just look good. They just look good to your eye. They look sharp, they look colorful, they look bright. They're everything you want in a display. They also have built-in speakers, which are pretty good. You can get solid sound separation and some amount of spatial audio or stereo audio and it sounds good. The only complaint that I have with them is what I have with any open speaker system, which is that if you play it on really loud, people next to you can hear what you're listening to. So that may be a problem for you, especially if you're playing like, I don't know, a particularly violent video game and you're playing it in an airport, it can get kind of weird, but you can always just connect your Bluetooth headphones to the Steam Deck and then you don't have that problem. And if you're nearsighted and you wear prescription glasses, these can actually correct to up to negative five, which should cover a lot of people. And now we need to talk about battery life because as we know, the Steam Deck only has one port. So if you're plugging in a pair of glasses, you can't be plugging in a charging cable or something else. So you're kind of stuck to whatever battery life the Steam Deck has. I've found I get about the same battery life if I have the glasses is plugged into the Steam Deck or I'm just using the Steam Deck's internal display, probably within five or 10%. Because remember, when you plug the glasses in, the Steam Deck's actual internal display turns off. So it's saving some power there, but then it's sending some power to the glasses and it's kind of a wash. That being said, there are going to be times when you want to play for longer than your Steam Deck's battery can support. And this is where their mobile dock comes in. It's basically just a big battery with some extra ports strapped on top of it. It gives you some extra ports so that you can plug in some more glasses. You can charge your Steam Deck at the same time time. You can do an HDMI output and it can clip onto the back of your Steam Deck. It's actually pretty nice. It has one glaring issue though that I couldn't believe made it through quality control, which is that when you clip the plastic piece that holds the dock onto the back of the Steam Deck, it totally blocks the intake fans. And I thought this was going to be a problem. And so I wrote this whole part of the script as if it was a problem. And then I was like, okay, I need to do some real firm testing. So I did the testing and I let Elden Ring run for a half an hour, which fully heat soaked the chip with the dock on the back and I wanted to see what would happen. And the craziest part to me is that the average CPU and GPU temps normally without the dock are about 69 degrees. And with the dock on, it was about 69 degrees. The only difference that I could see was that the fan ran generally between 300 and 400 RPM higher. So the fan does run a bit faster, but it's not very noticeable. And this kind of shocked me because it's totally blocking the intakes. But then when you look a little more carefully at the back of this dock bracket, you can see that they do have spacers. So there is an air gap. So I guess there's enough of an air gap for the Steam Deck to still be sucking air in from the sides and it doesn't really affect thermals. I was shocked by this. I thought for sure it was going to suffocate the deck, but as it turns out, Vitcher did their testing and it's totally fine. I was worried for nothing. So if you want extra battery life or you want to be able to charge your Steam Deck while you're using it, or if you want to have an HDMI output for whatever reason, then the dock is a really good option for that. So I've had a pretty damn good experience with these glasses, but it hasn't been perfect. So I want to talk about a few negatives that I have and see if they'll be deal breakers for you. One that I mentioned earlier is that if you're laying down and you're laying down on an especially soft pillow, then the arms of the glasses, these, because they stick out so far, they can rest on the pillow and it can be hard to get the glasses to sit right on your face. And because of where the cable connects, sometimes it can disconnect your cable, although that just takes a little getting used to. And then I didn't have that problem that much anymore. Another problem that I had is with the display technology itself, I think, which is that you get some amount of vignetting on the very corners of the screen. 90% of the time, it's not a problem. But if you have a game where there's fine text, like small text that you have to read in the corners of the display, then it can be hard to read that. And then I have another problem that kind of combos with this, which is that when I'm playing games on a monitor or something, when I look, I have to look to the corner of the display, my eye will move, but my head will move a tiny bit also at the same time. They kind of happen right at the same time. But on the glasses, if your head moves, the display moves with it because the display is mounted to your head. So you get this weird thing where I'll like 
look and I'll look my head and then you'll kind of keep on looking and looking and looking and it just takes a little bit to get used to but you'll end up turning your head because you're trying to look at the thing by turning your head but you need to only move your eyes and that took me a little getting used to and I've used the glasses for quite a while now so I don't do it much in anymore but it still is there which is that I kind of want to look with my head instead of just my eyes. Maybe that's just me, maybe I'm weird, but I thought I'd let you know. Then I have to mention it again, the comfort is just not great. If you're only gonna game for about an hour, you're gonna be totally fine, but anytime you go for more than an hour or two, the bridge of your nose is going to start to hurt, unless you can lay down. If you can lay down, then it's gonna be comfortable. But if you're sitting, which sometimes you just have to do, like on a plane or in a car or something like that, your nose is gonna get kinda tired. That's, that's just the way it is. And speaking of using these in a car, I use these in a car, which I play my Steam Deck in a car all the time, and I don't have any problems with getting motion sick. But when I played my Steam Deck with these glasses on for first person shooters in the car, I was finding myself getting more motion sick for sure. Definitely more than using the Steam Deck's internal screen. So just know it might lead to motion sickness or it could just be a me thing, but I thought I should let you know. But yeah, I actually think that's all the negatives that I have. These things are super cool, but should you pick them up? Well, we got to talk about price. The One XRs start at 550, but they're currently on sale for 440, which is getting pretty expensive considering that's about the price of a Steam Deck. And if this is just going to be a Steam Deck accessory, that's an expensive accessory. And while I can't really say if this is going to be valuable enough for you, is it gonna be worth it for you? Here's my take. There were a bunch of games that I just wouldn't play on my Steam Deck because the screen was too small. The only time I would play those games is when I was hooked up to the TV or hooked up to my monitor, and then I could play them. But on the Steam Deck's internal screen, it was just too small to play some games and really enjoy them for me personally. What these allowed me to do is those games I can now play and enjoy anywhere that I want. Meaning if I'm at the airport, if I'm in a car, if I'm in a waiting room, whatever, you look a little funny wearing the glasses because they're big and bulky, but now you can play those games wherever you want. And that's something I couldn't do before. This is opening up what games I can play and where it's like, fully delivering on the dream of being portable. Whereas before when you're portable, the internal screen was just too small to play some games, but now I am fully portable. I can play any of my games on the go and that is valuable to me. But is that valuable to you? I mean, it's up to you if it is. If you don't have any problem with the Steam Deck's internal screen being small, then don't get these. But if you find yourself always squinting and wanting the screen to be bigger or always plugging it into your TV so you can have a bigger screen, then these might be a good option. All right, hopefully that helps you decide if you wanna buy some or if you don't wanna buy some. If you have any comments about them, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.